in the previous lecture we were doing the part program preparation for machining centers and we have seen how the can cycles helped us to improve the programming clarity by reducing the number of blocks that are present the various can cycles that are used are for drilling counter boring counter sinking tapping deep hole drilling reaming and boring these are the types of operations that are present and these are all standardized by iso and i will discuss a few of them here and uh, we will see how they are actually applied for example typical motions that are embedded in g82 82 is normally used for can cycle with a dwell what we do is here it's very much similar to g81 which is used for drilling so 82 rapid position above the clearance plane above the point and then feed to the depth and then what we are going to do is when we reach the end the tool will stop there for a while and typically that will be programmed so if it is not programmed it will be taken as 2 seconds but otherwise normally you can program it and then after that dwell it will come back to the plane this type of operations are used for blind hole drilling counter boring counter sinking operation that means any operation where the tool will not be breaking through the material but will be left inside the material so that it will take care of the elastic deformation that will be experienced by the cutting tool because of the cutting forces so the way that we are going to do is g82 xyz r very similar to g81 we only add one more term here that is the dwell time so, okay g82 drill can cycle xy coordinates of the point where it is to be drilled z that is the total depth r is the clearance plane p that is the dwell time then in seconds that will be specified so that the tool will be a pa- idling at that point uh, wherever it is going to do now let us see we want to machine a component it has a number of operations and we'll let us see how they can be done so what we have here is we have four holes that are to be counter bored that is a 12 mm hole and then a 20 mm counter bore and then five holes that are to be drilled which is 12 mm diameter and the counter bore depth is shown here as 10 mm okay now the first step to think of is where should the x and y axis should be located if we look at one possibility is you keep it here on one corner but because of the nature of the component geometry you see if i take this as the center point it's going to be far more easier for me because once i get these coordinates all the other coordinates can be easily worked out from there same thing goes about this because whatever x and y that i calculate for this this will be minus x and plus y minus x minus y and this is minus y plus x so coordinate calculation becomes relatively easy that's the reason why i take the center point as the coordinate axis okay and what are the operations basically you have two operations one operation is drilling these 12 mm holes and the other one is counter boring the all the four holes and here we see show the tools the speed to be used and uh, feet so drill 12 mm holes nine counter bore the four holes and whatever speeds and feet that are required okay so when i want to write the program because the coordinates are already specified in the program so in the part drawing so i will use it start with my initial uh, statements they are the same metric absolute set point then first tool which is the drill that is the 12 mm diameter twist drill will be there and specify whatever rpm and whatever direction it has to move once the initial is done the next is to start with the eight holes because all eight holes are 12 mm diameter so we start with the first hole specify the can cycle for hole drilling that is g81 and uh, first hole coordinate then the depth up to which it has to go then this is the rapid plane position 
R2 and then whatever feed rate that I want to give. Then the next is specify the second hole to be drilled, third hole to be drilled, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. So all the holes have been completed. So when all the holes are completed, then the next thing to do is cancel this drilling because I have to do drill the holes first and then counter bore. Okay. So when all the drilling operations are completed, I will have to cancel that and then after cancelling bring the tool to a top position and then what I am going to do is tool change. So bring the next tool in position that is this is the counter boring tool which is basically a end mill of the 20 millimeter diameter specify because it is a larger size therefore RPM has been reduced slightly. Start the spindle in the clockwise direction then bring in G82 because this is a counter boring and uh, remember we said for the purpose of counter boring we use G82. So 82 specify the first hole depth up to which it has to go. Notice the depth is given minus 10 which is same as the depth of the counter bore. We are not adding any value like we have added for the case of drilling because here the tool is ending inside the material Z minus 10. So we specify the R plane position and specify that I want the tool to stop there for one second. So we will say P1 and then F122 that is the counter boring. So I need to specify the four holes. The first hole is counter board. So specify the second hole coordinate, third hole coordinate and fourth hole coordinate. So all the operations are completed. Then cancel this cycle because I will have to cancel the G80 counter boring cycle and then once it is done lift bring the tool back to the start point and end the program like that we have done in the previous case. So we have added all the end blocks like we have done in the previous cases. Okay. So we have second tool change all the blocks that are required for counter boring then end blocks that is what it is. So whenever you are writing the program make sure that you put the start blocks put the main blocks and then put the end blocks always remember to do that. So if I simulate that program this is what it will come. Now the next topic that will be of interest to us is uh, the concept of cutter radius compensation. This is uh, required because whenever you are doing a contouring operation the programming requires a large amount of calculations. So when we are doing large amount of calculations if we can find out a way of doing. Now what is the reason for calculations? The reason is we have the part drawing that is given to us with the contour and in order to cut it whenever we are using a tool we have to offset the path by an amount equal to the radius and then calculate. So that offsetting is what will be complicating the issue. So suppose if I want to machine using a tool with zero diameter then I do not have to offset. That means I will be able to make use of the data as given by the part drawing directly. So that is what makes life easier for the programmer because he does not have to do any calculations except the data that is available on the part drawing. So the concept of a cutter radius compensation is programming with a tool having a diameter equal to 0. But how does that work? That works by making use of the uh, uh, the G codes G40, G41, G42 like this. For example, if I have a part contour like this, okay, whatever that is given here. Now if I am using a, a tool of certain diameter, I will have to offset this path by an amount equal to the radius of the cutter and then calculate all these coordinates as shown here as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I will have to find out and do the calculations. Now if it is the straight lines pro calculating the points will be easier but whenever you have these arcs and arcs that are tangential to the arcs the transition points are going to be really complicated. So if you want to apply your geometry and trigonometry skills probably this is the place 
and uh, it's not really that convenient. So, the advantages of using a radius compensation is all your calculations are going to be simplified because you won't really be doing any calculations. And also, what can happen is you may think that you are cutting with a 20 millimeter cutter, but when you go onto the shop floor, suddenly find that your 20 millimeter cutter is broken and you may have to use a 25 millimeter cutter. So, if you have programmed with a 20 mm cutter, then if you are going to cut it with 25 millimeter, you have to recalculate all and then rewrite the program. That's what makes life difficult. So, different size cutters can be used with the same program if you use the cutter radius compensation. In fact, same program can be used for both roughing and finishing cuts by changing the radius offset values. Now, what is cutter radius compensation? So, we use G code 40 which says cutter compensation cancel. 41 is cutter radius compensation to the left and 42 is cutter radius compensation to the right. G40, G41 and G42. That is what we are going to use. Now, there are certain restrictions when you are using the cutter diameter compensation. It is always. Notice that I am using sometimes cutter radius, cutter diameter. Both mean really the same. The actual value compensated is the radius and not diameter. Okay? But sometimes we call it as cutter diameter, sometimes we call it as cutter radius. Now, compensation G code has to be specified in a separate block with both x and coordinates in linear tool motion. That means, when you are using G01, then only it can be applied. It should not be applied when you are using either G02 or G03. That is important. Now, the initial linear movement that you will use whenever cutter compensation is applied should be larger than the radius of the cutter. Suppose, if you are having a radius of 20 millimeters and if your linear motion is only 5 millimeter, then you should not use the cutter compensation because when you do that, then there will be an undercutting that will be taking place. So, that is important. So, the linear movement always should be greater than the radius. Then first move for inside cut should be a location away from the inside corner. In fact, it is a bit more complicated when you are doing the applying cutter compensation when you are mentioning a pocket that is inside cuts. So, there you will have to be a little more careful and always start your compensation away from the corner. So, you will have to think of that that is what is shown here. Because whenever you are doing here, for example, this is the internal and your initial tool is here. If you try to go here and start your compensation, there is always going to be an undercut taking place here as shown. So, always whenever you have a situation like this, you should uh, position the tool to somewhere here and start the compensation. Do not do that at the corner. Okay. Now, let us take up an example here. The profile of the part is to be machined is shown in figure 520. It is being cut with a slot drill of whatever radius. Now, let us say this is the example you have. It is uh, not too simple, but of course, not too complicated as well. But when we see this, we need to calculate when you have to offset this by here and calculate number of additional coordinates. Instead, by applying the cutter radius compensation, we are assuming that the tool is of zero radius. Therefore, tool will be directly cutting through. So, we do not have to do any additional calculations, but simply get the coordinates 1, 2. So, these are the programmed coordinates 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It is exactly the same. And since we have taken the 0, 0 as the lower left hand corner of the part, it is also easy to calculate the coordinates. But in real practice, though you have programmed like that, the controller will automatically calculate because what we will be doing is we will be specifying the radius of the cutter in the tool offset values. So, once the tool offset values knows what is the diameter, it will automatically offset the contour by an amount equal to the radius of the cutter that we are using. So, what we are seeing here is actually the offset value. For example, here the tool you program this point 
you have actually programmed this point but tool will actually position to a point which is at a distance of radius from this point and the actual movement of the tool is this and that is automatically calculated by the program or the controller that's what make the life much simpler now the program will be again so these are the initial blocks for example this is inch units g70 absolute tool change so the first tool is a 0.5 inch end mill specify the thing so i'm giving all the values as calculated so now here when i am starting at this point i will specify g41 g41 is uh left see now how do you specify what is left what is right you have to imagine yourself sitting on the tool and as you are moving with the tool so whatever if the offsetting is going to be done on your left side then you will use left that is g41 and if the offsetting is to be done on the right you are going to say g42 okay what you will have to think of is you are sitting on the tool and moving with the tool so your left is left right is right so g41 is left g42 is the right so here what we are going to say is g41 g0 x1 and then we have to specify how much is the offset value that offset value is actually stored in a register here so that is what is specified by d11 d11 specifies that the offset value is actually stored in d11 so for example if this is a 0.5 inch diameter tool that 0.5 value is actually stored in the register d11 so the controller when it reads this statement will go into the register value d11 fetches that value and applies then rest of it of course is our normal programming g1 g2 g3 whatever that is required then in the end when uh, the it is completed we will have to give the cancellation of the compensation g40 okay cancel the compensation and then rest of it is simple okay so when you see the simulation that will be there now there are a few things that you will have to note down whenever you are using the cutter radius compensation one thing tool should be positioned away from the point of start of the compensation so that it will start what we call as a ramp on move and then tool should be positioned away from the last move again so that it will be making what is called as a ramp of move the ramp of move means it will be to start with it will be at an offset position and when you are cancelling the compensation it will have to go to the programmed point so that compensation will be gradually decreased that's what it is compensation should never be started at the start or end of the circular interpolation you will always have to start when you are making a linear interpolation and not circular interpolation now in case of internal cavity milling tool should be positioned at a point normal to the center of a line segment that's what is the example that i shown a little earlier a initial linear motion should be greater than the radius of the cutter used that's what also we said any step down cut taken should be greater than the radius of the cutter otherwise some undercutting will takes place now what we are going to do is we are going to write a complete part program using the iso codes that we have talked about earlier and also show all the necessary documentation for the program okay now this is the component that we want to write the program for okay now here we have already discussed this component earlier just to refresh we have these five holes to be drilled these 20 small holes to be drilled and this small pocket is to be milled so my process plan will be drill the five holes so diameter 12 9.5 mm depth using a hss uh, twist drill of 12 mm diameter then i will end mill this slot which is uh, 12 by 30 mm size to a depth of 1 mm 
again using a slot drill slot drill or end cutting end mill is a diameter 6 millimeters and then the last operation will be drill the 20 holes with 3 millimeter diameter 6 millimeter depth with a HSS twist drill notice that uh, the it's a very small diameter drill but also length is not really that much so therefore we can use G81 for this now we will have to tell the operator because programmer is different from the operator so we will have to tell the operator how to set this because this is a simple part and therefore this can be you can simply use a vice for the purpose of uh, cutting so you can use it for fixing application so you can see normally show a setup sketch showing the vice position so this is a fixed jaw this is a movable jaw the part is located inside and show the coordinate frame that you have the blank to be machined to the 80 millimeter by 80 millimeter size to be mounted in a machine wise fixed to the machining center table as shown so you have to provide a setup sketch and also some setup instructions so that operator knows how to set up the part so these are initial instructions notice these are all basically comments you remember when I said you anything that is written after a, a semicolon will be considered as a comment so that's what we will do so sometimes it is good to leave operator instructions in the beginning of the program so put as many instructions as you like the controller will not really bother about that once it encounters semicolon it ignores everything now this program requires three tools one 6 mm end mill one 12 mm twist drill and a 3 mm twist drill ok so those are the three T1, T2, T3 and this is a metric program and absolute also should have been there G90 then bring the tool one first you want to finish the pocket milling operation that means using the 6 mm end mill if you notice uh, the reason why I chose the 6 mm end mill is the corner radius of the pocket is 3 mm radius so that this 6 mm end mill will automatically generate the 3 mm radius that is required in the pocket that's the only reason yeah, I cannot use larger than that ok because the selection of an end mill whenever you are doing a pocket milling will have to be based on the radius that is provided there so I have used that and then I will be bringing the tool and start the pocket milling operation start the spindle identify whatever speed that is required and then go in mill the first pocket because milling the pocket is all we have to do is the tool will go position to the top point go to the depth then take a turn then so all it will be all G01 that is straight line so mill the first pocket then when the milling is completed retract plunge mill the second pocket basically so what we are doing is in the first instance we are going to the top of the hole the top of the pocket go to the depth that is required plunge and then go to whatever that is required so go to the directions all that and once the pocket is milled completely lift the tool retract then repeat the same operations at the second pocket again position to the second contour plunge so that will be plunging here go like this like this like this and then come back that's what you are going to do so the coordinate values of course you will have to calculate from the part drawing then once the two pockets are finished then I will have to go change the 12 mm twist drill is brought so that all those five holes that are present will be drilled so since it is a drilling operation I am going to make use of G81 drill five holes so specify the speed for the drill 800 rpm actually M03 should have been here so that it will start then go to G0 x 12.5 so that is each of the coordinates 1 2 3 4 5 so drill first hole this will be the second hole third hole fourth hole fifth hole so all the five holes are drilled here 
so same coordinates here 1 2 3 4 5 and then cancel the cycle because we have used the drill cycle so we are cancelling the drill cycle here after cancelling the drill cycle the next operation that will be drilling these 20 holes 20 small holes so what i am going to do is change with the 3 mm twist drill drill the 20 holes so specify whatever speed is that is required and then go to the first hole location and start the cycle now here remember the tool is drilling but it is not going all the way through because it is a blind hole drilling since it is a blind hole drilling i am using g82 in place of g81 okay so then rest of course is straight forward because it is 82 i will have to use p value that is the dwell time that is required so 2 seconds so g82 whatever depth and the rapid plane position then we have we are going to repeat the same at all the 20 locations so i have to give all the 20 coordinates so you will see that all the 20 coordinates will be coming here for the purpose of drilling so when all the 20 holes are completed then i will cancel stop the spindle because spindle is rotating so stop it and then retract bring the tool above and go to the start point and then end of the file so that will be ending the program this is the simulation program that i am using so this simulation program what it does is it allows you to enter the program it is just like a, a normal uh, text editor so the way that you will be using in let's say word processor you can enter your program and then after entering the program what you will be doing is you will be setting the library so you will specify what tools you are going to use tool number 1, 2, 3, 4 whether it is a drill, mill or whatever type of tool that you are going to use set and you are set your shape of the workpiece that is a blank whatever size in terms of length, width and height that you will specify here and once you can run through you will be able to see the simulation of the program in fact all the simulations that are shown in my presentation so far they are all done using this program ok so this is the simulation for this program you can see the 5 uh, counter board holes 2 pockets and the 20 holes that are drilled at these locations these are all present here so far what we have done is we have completed the milling various uh, types of parts that we have done now next what we would like to see is look at the uh, turning machines now programming for milling and turning is very similar what we will like to see is in the turning center programming it's very similar to the milling center programming there is not much of a difference except there are a small differences and that's what i will explain to you now now first the difference major difference that you will be seeing is the axis system what it means is that it's basically you only have two axes in not three axes so instead of x y z that you have in a machining center in the case of turning center you only have two axes that is x and z sometimes for advanced machines you may have more axes like uh, c y or w but we will not really be doing that so in our course we should be doing only two axis machines now that two axis machine will look something like this so you see the headstock here where the part will be mounted in the chuck and then you have a tool turret with the number of tools that are present so any one of the tools that are present in the turret will be coming happen this probably will be more clear you can see the chuck three jaw chuck typically it will be a hydraulic three jaw chuck with a workpiece that is mounted you have a normal tail stock and the tool post or tool turret will be located here so where you can mount the tool and then some machines have more than one tool post so if you have more than one tool post you will have to be careful when programming based on 
which tool is coming whether from the tool post 1 or tool post 2 okay like the example that is shown here so you have here you have one tool post that is present here and another tool post that is present here so any one of those tools can come into operation so we will have to be careful which tool is coming into operation either if it is is working we will have to take care with the to working so normally they are designated for example this is designated as front turret and this is designated as the rear turret so whether the tool is coming from the front or rear you will have to take that into in the programming function now most of the turning centers will have a tool turret as shown in the previous example therefore tools are going to be indexed and that is going to be much more easier compared to the tool magazines as used in the machining centers because it is going to be indexed it is going to be very close to the workpiece so you will have to be careful whenever you are programming the tool change operation so what you have to do is whenever you are making a tool change operation you will have to move the tool turret to a position that will be very clear so that when it is indexing none of the tools will hit the workpiece that's what you will have to take care of like for example here you can see this is the workpiece and this is the tool turret so when you are going to program whenever the tool is to be changed what you will have to see is you have to move the tool away tool turret away then do the indexing and bring it back into operation so that the tool will not hit the workpiece when it is doing the indexing operation this is one very common mistake done by the students most often they forget to move the tool turret away from the workpiece and when wherever the tool is present they will simply index and that is one of the major causes of problems in the uh, laboratory and the type of tools that are used are different because in the case of uh, machining centers or milling machines what we are using is a multi edge cutting tools whereas in the case of turning centers what we will be using are single point turning tools for example for either turning or boring operation so again we will have to take care of that when the machine is sometimes equipped with c axis that is again as i said the advanced machines there we may sometimes use end mills but in this course we are not going to discuss those so i will not go into the details now you can have operation such as threading can be done here so you have a single point tool for od threading and a single point tool for id threading okay internal so basically it is a boring bar and this is a turning tool and tool nose radius now the turning tool is not a sharp tool so though for the purpose of showing we may show it as sharp but in real terms what you will have is a small nose radius however the nose radius is extremely small typical nose radius that is used is 0.4 mm or 0.8 mm though it is small it is still there therefore you have to take that into account while programming this is what it looks like so the tool though it is sharp if you see under magnification what you will see is actually a nose radius the effect of this tool nose radius is that the actual contact point between the tool and the workpiece could lie anywhere within this range that's what makes programming slightly complicated uh, but of course there are facilities available in the controllers to alleviate this problem i'll talk about that slightly later but you have to be remember that tool nose radius has to be taken into account and the other thing is the greatest simplification to programming in the turning centers is coming because the workpiece is rotation so therefore uh, though we are producing a 3d profile in real practice it is only a 2d profile we only have x and z axis and because of the rotation automatically the third dimension is achieved so uh, the programming is relatively easy for the uh, turning centers this is what we will be looking at so you will have a workpiece that is rotating so tool speed and the work diameter 
okay this is another concept uh, peculiar to the turning centers conceptually if you look at any of the part drawings that are given for turning most of the time the dimensions are shown that of the diameters rather than radius but when the tool is moving in real practice the tool is moving along the radius so strictly speaking you have to program only the radius but if you look at the part drawing you have the diameters now how to take care of this one way is the programmer can divide all the diameters by 2 and take the radius and use that radius for the purpose of calculation or alternatively you can write the program using the diameter values and let the com- controller do the calculations to the radius so you will have to tell the controller whether you are doing radius programming or diameter programming so but a, a given program can be either diameter or radius not both so you will have to take care of that so we will have to make sure that control is set to the diameter programming before you can do the diameter programming but in this course we are going to do all radius programming so there is no confusion in that otherwise it is what will look like this so if you are given a diameter so though you will be moving only along the radius the values that you will be showing will be in the diameters and very often when we are doing the jobs on the turning centers there will be we will be starting raw stock basically like rolled stock for example we will start with a bar and then cut whatever shape that is required inside now when we are doing that we will have to remove a large amount of material and since we are using a single point cutting tool the amount of depth of cut that you can take in a given cut is limited for example you may have to remove 20 mm of material but in real life when you are using a let's say carbide tool probably you will be able to take 2 mm as one one cut maximum that means the 20 mm will have to be removed by 10 cuts so you will have to program all these 10 cuts with different sizes so we will have to plan those cuts this is what we normally call as cut planning and i will be showing a couple of examples where how this cut planning is done and also there are uh, features which are internal and external that means external diameters as well as internal diameters like turning or boring they are identical or similar so what we are going to do is programming wise there is not much of a difference the only thing you will have to take care of is to see which tools are being used and how the tool is moving so that it will not interfere with the work piece that's the only part that will have to be remembered and uh, some g and m codes are identical to that of the machining center and the some special codes are available for this for example we may doing some grooving operations threading operations which are not present in the machining center so the codes that are used are the procedures that are used for that are going to be different so we'll have to take care of that now this shows a typical format that is used for turning centers this is again uh, you might have noticed very similar to the one that we have used earlier so you have the block number this is for block number g codes this is uh, coordinate values now here one interesting thing in turning centers is like in the case of machining centers we have used g90 and 91 for absolute and incremental programming but here uh, we use two different codes for the same for example x is used for absolute x motion and u is used for incremental x motion the idea here is we don't have to go for using g90 and 91 i'll show you a little later again with an example z is similar to x but for the z axis ik are the center coordinates f feed s for spindle speed t for tool function m for miscellaneous function so the codes that are used are very similar to the machining center so once you are familiar with machining center probably programming for turning centers is going to be far more easier now what are the various operations that we will be doing this is a facing operation shoulder turning taper turning 
contour turning operation will have the grooving operation or sometimes do a parting operation that is when you take a rod and then cut a part and then make one more part cut it one more part cut it so do the parting operation then we will be doing a drilling operation here now normal uh, drilling operations cannot be carried out here because here it is the workpiece is rotating and tool is not rotating and as a result the drilling of a hole can only be done at the center of the workpiece not anywhere else okay what are the tool materials that are commonly used in either turning center or machining centers cemented carbides coated carbides ceramics sometimes even diamonds now you have to select the tool insert generally whenever you are selecting a carbide uh, tool insert make sure that you select the strongest insert shape that is possible select the smallest practical insert size select the largest tool nose radius so that the strength of the tool is maintained and select the largest boring bar diameter having the smallest possible overhang now the process parameters basically cutting speed feed rate and depth of cut are used and they when you cutting speed can be obtained from the tables and uh, cutting speed is given as pi d n by 12 if it is inch units and uh, sometimes when we are using we use the right hand tool so we call it as right hand turning or left hand turning so what will be right hand turning is when the tool is moving towards the head stock then it will be called as right hand turning and when the tool is moving during cutting towards the tail stock it will be a left hand turning operation okay i'll stop here